In this video, I'm gonna go over some different ways that you can light the same exact space and talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each lighting technique. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Matthew. I am an interiors and architecture photographer based in Kansas City. And speaking of the channel, we just recently passed a pretty notable benchmark. We are now past the 1000 subs threshold. But yeah, all things considered, I'm still pretty new and pretty fresh to this whole YouTube thing. So if you are new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing and you know do the thumbs up thing and all that other cliche stuff that YouTubers ask you to do. Okay, so let's get to it. On the list of things that make a great interiors or architecture photograph, uh, right under composition, in my opinion, is lighting. Your composition could be perfect, but if your lighting is off, it could make your final image look bland, boring, and flat. On the other hand, if your lighting is great, it will look way more interesting. It'll convey the accurate mood and feel of a space and just be an overall better looking image. So to show how different lighting setups can be from one versus another, I decided to shoot the same exact space, take the same exact shot, but light it several different ways. I decided on this one point perspective kitchen shot, but I also took some video to help give you a clearer idea of the type of space we were in. So if we analyze the natural light, we are getting a little bit from the entryway, but relative to the rest of the main area, it, the, there's not a whole lot coming from the entryway. On the other hand, a ton of natural light is coming in from the living room and that dining area next to the kitchen. And we'll talk a little bit more about the natural light situation here in a bit. Okay, so let's start with the no-brainer lighting setup where we really don't do anything. We just shoot the space as is. We're not adding any light, we're not modifying it, we're not taking any light away. All the lights are on and all the windows are open. As you can see, it's a decent shot. And as long as the verticals are straight and the camera is level, this might actually be a totally acceptable shot depending on who your client is. All right, so what are some of the pros and cons or some of the advantages and disadvantages of shooting like this? Number one should be pretty clear, it's, it's easy. Aside from figuring out your composition and possibly adjusting some objects or furniture in the frame, you really don't have to do much. Two, it's great if you're pressed for time, which is fantastic if you're shooting real estate. Three, if you want the final photo to look pretty similar to the way it did when you shot it, there's minimal editing, which as you can probably tell, yes, I did minimal editing on this photo as well. Okay, so what are some of the cons? Number one, it's really hard to get that clean look that a lot of photographers aim for. With all the lights on and all the windows open, you're getting daylight mixed with interior tungsten lights, so you're gonna get this weird mix of color tones. Con number two is it's not the most moody looking photo. Shadows that are created by the natural light are being filled in by the interior light. Okay, so let's move on to the next lighting setup, which might be a no-brainer where we shoot with all the interior lights off and we're just using natural window light. Now, side note, please keep in mind, personally, I did really, really quick edits on these, so please don't judge me in my whole catalog of work based on the photos that you're seeing on screen. I, I went through the edits pretty basic and pretty quick. So again, for this scenario, the only thing that we did was just shut all the interior lights off. Pros and cons of shooting like this. I'm looking at the photo right now. Number one, again, it's pretty easy to shoot. The only real difference between this one and the first one is, again, the lights are off. Two, you're gonna have a way easier time dealing with color casts in the edit. A majority of the time, if you're shooting like this, you're only dealing with color tones coming from one source, the windows. And pro number three, we're now introducing a little bit more mood into this photo as well. We're now letting the window light flow across the room to create natural contrast and add a lot more natural depth and dimensionality to the photo. Okay, so what are the cons? Con number one, some clients just don't like it. Some clients just insist that the window lights be on in every single shot, which does kind of lead into con number two, if there's a lot of thought that's been put into the design and placement of the interior lighting, well now all that is lost because again, all the lights are off. And con number three, you're at the mercy of natural light. There's a lot that's out of your control. Okay, so let's move on to the third lighting setup. Not much is different in this case. We are still shooting with all the interior lights off and we are still using natural window light. The main difference being 
In this instance, we are actually removing some of the window light. Now, as much as I love natural light, when it does enter in through a window, it also bounces around the room and can hit objects within the room from different directions other than the direction from the windows, especially if you have white or light colored walls. Now, because the camera was set up in the living room where in all reality, a majority of the natural light was coming from, the light bouncing around the space that we were in was actually creating some fill light coming from the direction that the camera was pointed. Long story short, it was adding some fill light that would kind of flatten the image a little bit more than I'd like. So what's the solution? Well, we take some away. In this instance, I wasn't too concerned with the light that was coming from the entryway. Again, relative to the rest of the room, it wasn't hitting much of our kitchen shot. What I did want though, was the light coming from the dining area, but I felt I was getting too much light from the living room. So using some contractor grade garbage bags and painter's tape, I blocked off most of the light coming from the living room. Now, had I had a ladder with me or some sort of large step stool, I would have even blocked off the windows up top, but I didn't, so it is what it is. After I was able to block out a majority of the light that was coming from the living room, I was able to take the shot and, now you may look at this image and think, well, it's not really that much different than the one before, but take a quick look. Let's do a before and an after. Before, after, one more time. Here was all natural light, all windows before and after where we cut some away. But an unfortunate residual side effect in this lighting, as you can probably tell, is we're getting less light on the side of the island and stools that face the camera. They're a little bit darker than I'd like. Okay, so what are some of the pros of shooting like this? Pro number one, the light is more precise, it's more custom, it's more shape. Pro number two, again, it's still fairly easy to edit. Again, the color tones are still only coming from one source, the windows. Okay, cons of shooting like this. In this instance, con number one, it does eat up more time. With this room in particular, even though I was only really covering up four windows, it took me about an extra 10 or so minutes just to do that. Con number two, still there's quite a bit that's outside of your control. The natural light and the look you're going for still may not be exactly the way you want. Okay, let's move on to the next lighting scenario. In this instance, we've cut out a lot of the ambient light by simply bumping up the shutter speed. And now we're going to use flash to mimic natural window light and the direction that it was coming in. Okay, pros of shooting like this. Pro number one, the light is very custom. It is very specific and tailored to what you want as a photographer. Pro number two, since we are in essence using light coming from one source, albeit in this instance, it'd be in the flash, the color tones are still uniform across the board. Pro number three, flash light, in my opinion, for some reason, tends to bring out more detail and texture in certain surfaces. Okay, the cons. Con number one in this instance is the Octobox. Because it's only three feet across by its nature, although it is a soft box, it's still casting some pretty harsh looking shadows in the image. The shadows just don't look soft. Con number two, if you're going to do a blend of different types of exposures where you're lighting up different parts of the room using some sort of soft box, it's still gonna look a little flashy. It's still gonna look a little fake. But if that's the look you're going for, Great. Con number three, we're now having to deal with extra pieces of gear and equipment that we have to lug around during the photo shoot. Okay, next lighting setup. Not much is different in this one versus the previous one. Instead of a three foot Octobox or Softbox, we're now using a seven foot wide Westcott umbrella. Again, mimicking natural light in the direction that it's coming in. The pros in this instance are pretty much a carbon copy of the previous one where we use the softbox, but the cons are a little bit different. As you may be able to tell in this instance, the shadows are definitely softer, but they're still not quite as natural looking as the window light. Con number two, we're still getting a little bit of that flashy look. So con number three in this instance is very similar to con number three in the previous lighting setup. We're still dealing with extra pieces of gear and equipment that we have to move around. And in this case specifically, moving around and having to work with a seven foot wide umbrella, it can be pretty cumbersome. Okay, the last lighting setup is where we have a majority of the light being bounced light that's coming from the ceiling. We're taking some sort of flash, shooting it into the ceiling and letting that bounced light fall on the scene that we're photographing. Pros to shooting like this, I'll be honest, I don't think there's much 
I don't think it's a great way to light a scene. It just doesn't look very natural. Unless you're trying to give your scene just a really unique type of lighting setup or look that you wouldn't see in any other type of photos, then maybe shoot like this. But jumping right to the cons, like I mentioned, it just doesn't look very natural. A majority of rooms just don't have a ton of soft light coming directly down from the ceiling. So even when you put the final image together, I don't know, something about it, it just looks off. And to be perfectly honest, early in my real estate photography career, I actually shot this way a lot. Okay, so there you have it. There's still other ways to light spaces, but these are just a few that I have used in the past. In fact, if I were to edit this photo for delivery to a client, it would probably end up being about a blend of maybe two or three of these type of lighting techniques. I am curious though, which way do you primarily light your spaces? Do you use flash at all? Do you shape the light with blocking some out or do you just kind of shoot it as is? Do you and your clients have a preference of one versus another? Let me know in the comments. That'll do it for this video. As always, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you're not subscribed, maybe do consider subscribing to the channel. If you got anything out of the video, make sure to give me one of these. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. You can drop me a question or a thought on there. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. We'll see you on the next one.